Now, should police have intervened in the Big Ben protest? 0207 862 -222. On Wednesday, there was a pro-Palestine protest in London and the slogan from the river to the sea was projected onto Parliament. Police officers were present at the protest, but they did not step in. They said they couldn't intervene because broadcasting a slogan onto Parliament was not a criminal offence unless the message breaks the law. Backbencher, Tory MP Andrew Percy, who's Jewish, said it's a weak and pathetic response, which we've come to expect from the Met, a force that has at times appeared to act more like a PR arm for the protesters than a law enforcement agency. The campaign against anti-Semitism said the projection of genocidal language onto Parliament was a wake-up call for Britain. Other messages that were projected onto Parliament were stop bombing Gaza, ceasefire now, and also stop war now. So that's less of an issue about criminality. But let's look at that first phrase I mentioned, from the river to the sea. And what they did, you couldn't really see it in the clip we showed, but they were putting up one word at a time. So you were going, flash, 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 from the river to the sea. That's how it worked. And it gave us this slogan here. And, and it is a very controversial slogan, and I'll show you why. So it's a reference to, to Israel, the occupied territories, Palestine, this area here at the heart of the Middle East. And from the river to the sea, let's just see the explanation. The full saying, from the river to the sea, Palestine will be free, is a reference to the land between the Jordan River, which borders eastern Israel and the Mediterranean Sea to the west. So have a look at the map. Here is the Jordan River and here is the Mediterranean. And obviously in this area, you've got all of this. You've got Israel, but you've got contested territory. You've got occupied territory. You've got Palestine as well. Palestinians stateless and wanting their own state. Now, if, if you take the generous interpretation, the more benign one, this phrase simply means that Palestine will exist between that piece of water and that piece. But the reason it's seen by some as anti-Semitic is that, it, that the view is that Palestine will take that area and Israel will have no place between the river and the sea. And therefore, it is a coded call for the destruction of Israel. That's how it's seen by some. Poppy, what do you think? So, um, Jeremy, as you know, I've, I said to you the last time I came on your show that I've been to pretty much every single one of the protests bar one. And many chants um, and slogans are uttered in these huge protests. And I've asked people when they've said from the river to the sea what it means to them. And all they say is their wish for Palestinians to live in their homeland um, as free and equal citizens. Not one person I spoke to, obviously I didn't speak to everyone, but as many people as I could, said we want to see the destruction of Israel. Now I understand but this. From the river to the sea does suggest all the land between the two. No, whenever I've said, but slogans have taken on so sure, for sure, such for different sure. meanings and they mean different things to different people and I understand that, but for, Pretty much everyone I spoke to, they were like, they weren't looking for the destruction of Israel. They just wanted Palestinians to be free and equal citizens mm. and not be dominated by Israel. So, so it's perfectly yeah. possible, Mike, it's a benign slogan? No, it's not a benign slogan, because to anybody else looking in from the outside, like me, it means exactly what you've just described, the destruction of Israel. There are nine million but people in Israel. According to you... There are nine million people in Israel where are they supposed to go but, okay, if but, the river but, but Mike, to the sea you... is enacted and it's all given over to some Palestinian but, country which doesn't exist? But I mean, right now, Palestinians are in one of the biggest open-air prisons in the world. And I but think it's you... a tragedy. Yeah, but when you ask... Have you ever asked anyone who's uttered that slogan what it means to them, right? It's all open to interpretation, right? When, and what it means. Let me when, take a call. When, we take a call from Aziz in Southampton. Aziz, what do you think? Is it anti-Semitic? Well, first of all, um, uh, saying uh, that demanding a ceasefire is not controversial. Um, probably uh, river to the sea means they want uh, peace right throughout uh, Israel and Palestine, right? And, you know, displaying these sort of uh, things that uh, you say is controversial, why is it okay to sort of have uh, Ukrainian colors on national buildings? Uh, and that's okay. But if there's any uh, support for Palestinians, it's always controversial. All right, Aziz, thank you. Ian in North Ayrshire, is it anti-Semitic to you? Go on, Ian. <laughs> Good morning. <laughs> Hello. Um, that chap uh, just before me... <laughs> that chap be before me stole part of my thunder. Now, what's the, what's the other uh, part? He's quite rightly. When the, when the government's happy, 
uh, to display uh, lights all over public buildings that reflect their policy and their party. They stick out their chest with a big, broad smile and wait for all the adulation. When it's not part of their policy or their party's policy, and they think they might offend customers that they sell arms to, they, they, get, up, they get a bit stroppy. So it, in law, it's not against the law to put a, a, a light on buildings. No, it's not. It's, it's, only, if the, it's only if, the, if it's, it's a sort of genocidal law. slogan, yeah. Let's, let's say what. Thank you, Ian. I want to speak to Angela Epstein, a friend of the programme here. You, you believe this is a loaded phrase, Angela? Yes. Good morning, everybody. Excuse me, got a bit of a frog this morning. And um, yeah, it is. It is a genocidal slogan. It is a staple of anti-Semitic um, tropes. And as a Jewish person, can I say, when I saw this, on a, a, an iconic building that represents the very heart of our liberal democracy and our police who are supposed to uphold the rule of law, I felt sickened, I felt threatened, I was shocked, and any decent person, regardless of what your political views are on Israel, should have felt the same. And for Poppy to say, oh, well, I've spoken to people in demonstrations and they don't say, Hamas! Have adopted a poppy. Do your research. Hamas have adopted this slogan. They are to remind you the death cult, the genocidal terrorist organization that unleashed the massacre on Israel. Let on me bring Angela, poppy. I have done, Pop poppy, Angela, poppy, I have done my research. I acknowledge what you're saying, but when you look at the etymology of any slogan, any chant, it can mean different things to many, many different people. Well, I'm I've Jewish, gone on every I'm single you what I'm it sorry. Means to well, me. I'm so sorry, I let you speak. I'm sorry that you feel that way, but I've gone on many protests. I hear this and many other chants, and I've spoken. And when I've asked people, what do you mean? What do you mean when you say that? Not one person has said, I want to see the destruction of Israel, or I want to see Palestinian, uh, Palestinians take over Israel entirely. Well, what about, Poppy, that Angela's point that it is used by Hamas in their constitution, their charter? So once they appropriate it, then it becomes really yeah, but it's loaded. It's also appropriated by Palestinians who don't want to see the destruction of mm. Israel. So where do you go there? Mm. Mike. Do you ban slogans? But, 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 Do you ban them? But part of the Hamas policy is to destroy Israel and kill every Jew on the face of the earth. So that's why it's there. Angela, the other thing that really upset me was it went on one of the most recognisable English government buildings. It will have gone all round the world. And that slogan, yes. almost, it's almost as if the British government were endorsing it. And that's why the police should have stepped yes. in immediately and closed it down. It was an incitement are, to hatred. There, there are so, so many people... Is, so on let, let, let Angela have one more shot. Yeah, OK, so can I say, I'm a British Jew. I'm as proud to be British as I am to be Jewish. So I'd simply say to every decent person watching this programme, set aside whatever your political views are in Israel, we are supposed to be a tolerant country. And if you buy the argument that, oh, well, some people at the march don't really interpret it that way. I've spoken to people at marches who don't even understand what they're saying and they chant it anyway. It is enough, it should be enough to say that Jewish people in this country at a time of spiralling anti-Semitism find this an absolutely disgusting genocidal slogan and for our police to do nothing and to see it on our mm. iconic Big Ben is as bad as hanging something in a window saying Jews out and we know where that led last time. So please, all, all kind of debating and trying to justify it aside, look to your decency and understand why this was a horrifying and wrong thing to do. Thank you, Angela, for joining us. And in Lincolnshire, what do you think? Well, I think that people are getting rather off the point because the question was, should the police have arrested them? Mm. And the police couldn't do that because it's not illegal at the moment. So it, it's just... No, we need to make, no, let's be clear on this. You can project your, uh, uh, you know, a photo of yourself on holiday mm. on the side of Parliament. And by the way, we're going to see... Let's see the famous one which started this all off in the 90s. Gail Porter... We're going to have a look at this. So, so she was a model and I think it was maybe Loaded magazine or FHM. And they rather brilliantly, these were sort of more innocent times in a way, they, they projected Gail there. Have we got a close up there at all or? OK. We're not allowed to see any closer than that. But anyway, she was, I thought she was lying down for some reason. No, stunning. Off. How strange. OK. We've but the got, point we, is that... Yeah, go on, Anne. Police can't arrest somebody for something that they haven't got a law to deal with. And there there is no, is and I'm like sorry, I, I only got halfway through. You can project Gail Porter. What you can't do is project a, a sort of 
hateful slogan. Exactly. And the issue but is whether... No, I know, but Poppy, Poppy I'm going about to say that. The issue is whether it, this is hateful, because there's an there's a argument about it, Anne. But I think that all, all beaming of anything, people should have to have permission to do it, because you, they might, get, uh, might do it, put anything up. And so you don't have. think anyone should be allowed to beam anything on a public building? No, I think you ought to have permission, and it right. should be illegal look, to do it without permission. I think, all right, and thank you. A... Thank you very much. I think there was a moment, I think it was Cadbury's Whisper Bars or something that projected on Canterbury Cathedral, but it's been a, quite a regular thing, uh, Poppy. Yeah, I, look, I think um, uh, this slogan, I know it's really loaded, but when I've spoken to people, they've said they wanted to reclaim it and say that actually all they want is Palestinian citizens to live as equal citizens. What about so having reclaiming... a different slogan? If this is, you know, you heard Angela's upset, why not just take a, say, look, we're not going to use that anymore, it causes too much it's trouble. It's the mantra to Hamas, isn't it? And Hamas are dedicated according to getting to rid you. of... No, no, according to them. Yeah, and, and according, according to them, to but, them. But then, then you it's have... their mantra. But when you have a whole group of people who want to reclaim that phrase and that slogan and use well, it... they're in not a, doing a very good job because worldwide well, it's recognised a... as a mantra well, to Hamas and Hamas wants to destroy They're not doing a very good job because all the headlines are basically saying it's a call to genocidal... Um, uh, intent and it's, it's not. not. It Let, is. Let's bring in Sultana Depending in London. Hi, to, right? hi, Sultana. Yeah, hi. What do you think of what? Who's in the right here? Yeah, um, I think nothing, nothing can be labelled as wrong these days after the stance of the government towards uh, uh, Gaza. It's what, a I... disgrace what's happening. Humanity has ceased to exist since October 7. How can you discuss what's wrong and right these days? Well, everything, yeah, we are doing, Sultana. So, is wrong. yeah. So the question is, can you beam that slogan on Big Ben, or should it be a crime? No, it shouldn't be a crime. As I said, nothing, nothing is wrong these days. Nothing's nothing. wrong. Yeah, when compared to what the government is doing, nothing. Oh, see, the government when of Israel, you, have, you mean? When you have. No, even here in England, here. when you have 30,000 people killed and the government cannot call for a ceasefire, I see. I see. This, is, this is what we call wrong. And yesterday in the uh, 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 Guardian, it says Foreign Office may have encouraged Gaza statement from Prince. Why is this government afraid or scared of Israel? Why? Why? I hear you. OK. Why can't we call for the we've ceasefire? Got, we're, we're kind of moving off the key subject here, which is the beam on Big Ben. But I do take your point. There's a context and it's important. And thank you. Later, it's the papers and everything else. Find out why the cost of...